I can claim that I'm from Brooklyn and Queens because I literally am. I live right smack dab on the borderline between Ozone Park and East New York. So this is the Brooklyn side, um, but this is where all the shopping happened. This was always very vibrant, City Line. There's still a lot of the same stores that I grew up going to that are still around, which is blowing my mind right now. But the reason why it was so special is that it wasn't full of big box stores. A lot of these places were little mom and pop shops, Kenny's. This is where I got my back to school supplies. The Trapper Keeper, the Jansport backpack, Am I dating myself? Lisa Frank folders. Oh my goodness. Wow. Kenny's. <laughs> you know, I always liked something extra flowery. I mean, back then it was unicorns for me. Colorful unicorns. I don't see anything like that. But you know what? This is still the tried and true. Of course, the black and white composition. My mom always said every year you're allowed three outfits for the whole school year. And then the rest of the school year was filled in by hand-me-downs from my cousin Audrey. And it got to a point where I was just over it. So I devised the plan in my head. There was a field trip coming up. And I decided to tell my mom that in order for me to go to this field trip, I have to get a new pair of sneakers. The ones that Audrey gave me, they had a hole in them. That wasn't gonna work. So we went to LIU Sneaker Store and I ended up with a pair of black and purple high top filas. I will never forget that feeling that that gave me. Uh, finally, some acceptance, feeling kinda fly. <laughs> That's a special moment for a city kid. We would walk to school. It was about 10 blocks and I'd be with my siblings and my friends. This is the Queens side of where I grew up, and this is my elementary school. Pia 64, Ozone Park, Queens. This is a very um, special place, a very interesting place, um, a place of a lot of transition, and I got to see a lot of it um, from the time I moved to Ozone Park to the time I was graduating from this little school. It played a big role in making me who I am, truly. I'm gonna give you a little bit of our school song. Um, for some reason, I remember all the words. Via Dabo School, Pia 64, the home of the blue and the gold. Ozone Park is a very special place. Um, when we moved to this community, it was starting to change, it was starting to transition. Um, it began as a heavily Italian community. And when we moved to our particular block, we were among the few minorities. So it was tough, it was really tough, but my parents truly believed that this was going to be a positive place for us to grow up. And you know what? No matter the racism and the prejudice that I experienced, because I experienced it, and a lot of it sometimes hurt me, I look back at this time, and the reason why I wanted to come back to this school is because there's only real fond memories that um, take over my mind when I think back at this time. Not the negative, it's mostly the fun, because we had a lot of fun. This was a time where kids could really be free, and um, I don't feel like it's like that so much today. My favorite grade had to be fifth grade because that was when I had Mrs. Sampson. She took a, an interest in me. I guess she saw that I was hardworking and she saw that I had a lot of passion and a lot of interest in certain subjects and she really wanted to nurture that. And that got me really excited about school. Hands down, obviously, my best subject was reading, writing. Worst subject, absolutely math. I was horrible at math. I needed all the help in math. I always sat in the front, but the reason why I did that was because I knew I was gonna be raising my hand and I didn't wanna get like, you know, those looks from the other students who would make fun of me for always raising my hand. But I love to raise my hand and I love to be able to read out loud. I became the orator of my classroom and I had to sit in front so that the kids weren't looking at me when I was doing it. So pro tip, which I learned very early on, sit all the way in the front so you could block out all the haters. This school, this entire community was truly like a safe haven for us kids. It was, it was a place where all of us could play together. And we were from all walks of life, from all cultures. 
We had kids from El Salvador, Peru, Guatemala, Puerto Rico. There were still Italians that I grew up with. So Multicultural Day was a big deal for us. They really wanted us to have pride in where we came from. So I remember trying ceviche for the first time, uh, fried rice, um, lasagna, like all kinds of dishes that I necessarily did not try or have at home. Being from the cultural background that I come from and also growing up here, it has definitely shaped um, what I think of food and, and how much I love food um, and how much I love to make it. You come to my house and you don't know what you're gonna get or from which country that food will hail from. That has a lot to do with growing up here and going to the school. So one of the things that I definitely wanted to share was when I started at WABC. Someone reached out to me on Facebook. It was my principal. He wrote a message, it was said something like, if you're the same Charlene from PS64, I am so proud of you. That meant the world to me. <laughs> I mean, not so much the part that I look the same to him. Hmm, I don't necessarily think I look the same. But the fact that he was proud of me, that I was able to do something in my life where the people in my community could look at me as a source of pride. So as you enter a new school year, I hope that you were looking at my story, that little girl who was so shy, who no one would ever have believed would become who she is today, doing what she's doing today. I hope that you see that you could totally change your path, no matter what anyone has to say about it.